my name is Leah McGetrick and I'm going to be doing my septic shock flashcard. So septic shock is a form of shock that develops in a person with severe infection, particularly infections with gram negative endotoxins such as E. coli and pseudomonas. Um, it occurs when the patient has sepsis and they're needing vasopressors um, or blood pressure support to maintain a mean arteri arterial pressure of 65 or above, as well as a serum lactic level greater than two. Um, this is in the absence of hypovolemia. So the pathophysiology behind it is that it is caused by vasodilation owing to severe infection, often with that gram-negative bacteria. There are many risk factors for it, the biggest ones being infection. Um, they're already on the verge of septic, and then they can go into the septic shock, as well as immunocompromised patients, especially cancer patients receiving chemo, any lengthened hospital stays, especially that in the ICU, any intensive procedures and surgeries. Age is a big one. Normally we see it a lot in younger kids, babies, neonates, and then older elderly people. Um, there are major signs and symptoms. You have the tachycardia, the fever, hypotension, lethargy, hypoxia, and then kind of your later signs, your acidosis, organ failure, hypothermia. Um, diagnostic testing wise, there's not really gold standard to diagnose septic shock. It is very presentation based, vital based, um, but lactate levels are common as well as just that presentation of how they look, what their vitals are like. Um, this is a picture that I found interesting. We actually use similar um, idea in our ER, but it's kind of a sepsis bundle. So you'll do the lactic level. If it comes back elevated, then you're going to want to do fluids, uh, blood cultures, and then start antibiotics. If the fluids are not maintaining a map above 65, then you need to switch to pressors um, and then probably admission to the ICU. So that is that. And these are my references. Thank you.